Greg, welcome to Thunder Bay. And, uh, Always a the, pleasure. And uh, into the cold again. But I guess you're used to that coming here in January. Well, as I was saying, it's, it's, this is, when we got out of the bus this morning, it felt warm because we've been in Moose Jaw and Prince Albert and Saskatoon. They were cold. Yeah, yeah. It's been 20 some years since five days in July. And when I say that, I feel old because I used, it seems like it was, it was yesterday when that, uh, when that album came out. That was recorded at your farm. And this, uh, this new album is recorded at the farm. Is there a certain sense of comfort uh, in recording at your place? My farmhouse is a great old spot. I first started collecting taxes there in 1863. And uh, it's in the bottom of this valley and you know, it's an hour outside of Toronto, but it feels like it's in a totally different place. Yeah. And so it's nice to get the band out there, and it's nice to get, try to get everybody in that one mind. And, and, uh, and for me now, my ears are, are so bad that it's the only place that I can really record, you know, because I can't wear headphones anymore. Oh. And so I've got a little system set up with speakers, and so it, it's good. Yeah. I see we brought Colin Cripps into the fold now. He's no stranger to Blue Rodeo. He's, he's played with you guys or recorded uh, before and, uh, and he's been touring along with, with Jim. So how does that, what does that add to the dynamic? Um, well, Colin and I started playing in bands together in a band called Crash Vegas. Right. Way, way back when Blue Rodeo was just starting. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I, we've known him forever. So Crash Vegas, and then he played on our stuff, and then he's been in the Jim Cuddy band. And, and so it, it's sort of like a, a perfect complement to the band. He knows the material so well, and he's such a great guitar player. And he and Michael Boguski on the new record made such a great contribution. You know, it was just uh, to have the, uh, such nice melodic players in the band was really, you know, as a songwriter, it's great to hear that. Yeah. Good, we're, we're looking forward to it. Uh, no, but Devin Cuddy is the opening act, Jim's son, and he's starting out in a whole new era of music and uh, talking about the industry. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, you guys were around when, when you sold, actually sold records. Well, you're still selling records now. You're bringing them back to vinyl. But, I mean, the, the whole marketing scheme has changed, right? How is it for him starting out? Well, you know, all I can say is I'm glad I'm at this point in my career rather than just starting out because it's a, it's a, a hard way to make a living. You know, yeah. like, you know, you can, you can make a record in your bedroom and you can have a hundred, you know, you can have a million hits on YouTube and you go to a club and there'd be four people there. Like, you know, it's a, it's a strange time. Yeah. So, and I, I, I wouldn't like, you know, I knew sort of, I thought I knew how to communicate to an audience and how to get like onto a record company and, you know, make records and all that back then. But uh, I'd be a little lost now. I, mean, I certainly don't have any advice for anybody because <laughs> I'm not, you know, familiar with it all. Right. And radio play is a whole different ball game as well, right? Yeah. And, and the same thing. Now, but, now your music that, that you've been releasing the, the last few albums, the radio stations aren't playing them like they used to, right? And and, and that that's not necessarily a reflection on, on the music. It's just how um, pigeonholed all the, these stations have become. Oh yeah. Has yeah. that affected uh, uh, the success at all? Not really, you know. Um, you know, like our this record, I think we were we sort of debuted in the top ten with our. Yeah. And then uh, I think last week we were bounced back up in the top twenty. And we're, but we're very lucky. We're an anomaly in that. In that, we have such a strong audience. We have an audience that actually buys CDs. You know, um, and that you know downloads are a big part of it now. And so you know that's all part of it. Um, you know, but we're, we're sort of lucky in all of that stuff, yeah. you know. I, I've never really been able to understand it. I always thought we'd play until people sort of got sick of us, but we keep on playing and playing and playing. And, and they're still coming, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think Thunder Bay sells out, if not close, every time you come here. Yeah, and, and, uh, oh yeah. And it's an annual, it's just like a homecoming again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but back to the music, though. I, I bought one of the, uh, the, your last album, I downloaded through your iTunes. And it didn't have the same feeling, so this time around, you know, it, it's really neat that you packaged the CD with a concert ticket. Right. And, uh, but it's still, uh, maybe it's me feeling old, but still wanting to have something physical in your hands as opposed to when you download it, where's the liner? Notes? Or where's right. those, you know, or the fact maybe we can't see and we have to hold the, <laughs> <laughs> the iPad out to here. Recently, uh, you guys got the Order of Canada, and uh, that's, that's, uh, that's quite the honor. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Is it uh, any perks that go along with that? 
No. <laughs> no, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a punctuation. Yeah. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change that, you know, I wake up this morning in Thunder Bay and I go to Kangas and have some heat and uh, <laughs> come back and do a sound check and play a show and get on the bus after. No, I can fly home tomorrow. You fly home. I still got to write songs. I still got to plow the driveway, you know. It, uh, it's just a very, very nice punctuation to, to yeah. my life. You sort of answered the part of the question, but I still have to ask it about the, the touring. You've been touring for so long. It, it, a, it has to wear on you, but I guess it's not wearing it enough that you're still doing it. Oh, I th it's easier now. Is it? It really is. And also because, you know, uh, the road is a discipline now rather than a party, where, you know, it used to be exhausting to be on the road because you were, you know, partying all the time. Right. And now we sort of look after ourselves, and both Jim and I, we. There's no caffeine, no tea or coffee. There's no smoking. Uh, uh, I don't drink at all. He has a bit of wine if he has the day off the day before. So it, you know it's changed considerably. But to to keep our throats in shape, we, you know, we're singing for a couple hours a night. Yeah. So to keep that in shape, we have to be very disciplined. And it really is. It's it's a lot easier now than it was when we were making party all the time. <laughs> We'll leave it on that note. I want to ask one question. How's uh, Colin's gene sales going? Oh, Col oh his, his gene. Well, yeah, Colin's got a, he's got a lot of pokers in the in the fire. You know, he he deals guitars and amps and you know he's and and now he's got this line of jeans called Outsiders. Yeah. Everybody in the band wears them. I don't have mine on today, <laughs> but and uh, t-shirts and and these really nice jeans. He's a man of a different era. Yeah. You know, he he likes that late 50s, early 60s thing, and musicians, cars, and, and his jeans. So he and this buddy of his, they, they started this jean company, and they're doing pretty good right now, so. Good, good. Well, thank you. Before, before I go, I wanted to show you one piece. This is, goes back, we talked about 20 years ago. <laughs> is this with you? Yeah. See, I like the Beatles when they're making the White record. We're doing like 106 takes of a song, where John Lennon would try singing, lying on his back, and seeing maybe that would sound better. Or else, once they uh, they tied him up from the from the ceiling, head down, and swung him around the microphone <laughs> because he wanted to see if he could get like this weird sound of like a dolloper effect uh, oh, yeah. going around. So you know, it all has its place. There's a guy with research there. <laughs> Is that up on the mountain? No, that was after the or before the mountain. This was at the Canadian Lake at exhibition. How about the, uh, the the Roy Orbison glasses? Those Roy Orbison glasses? Or? Oh no, he had uh, he had Wayfarers. These are Bellaramus, so he, there's a, quite a finesse in sunglasses. See, Jim, my my you're getting your my research isn't up. going far no. that far back, is it? That's pretty funny. I remember this one because this tour, I'd sent my laundry out. Oh, okay. And we stayed at a hotel, yeah. and they didn't get back to me in time, so I had to go to the mall the next day and get clothing. And there's that jean jacket, I remember that because I hated it so much, but it was all they had. Was so the they, mall. All they had? That's great. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Well, thank you.